Hey y'all, it's Tuesday. Come on in here. Um, so I am going to very quickly today just share a few Tuesday thoughts with you. Uh, it has been an eventful few days. As you know, we had a tornado in Dallas, my first ever tornado. Praise God. I didn't see it because I might have um, been in my feelings, but I heard it and that was um, enough. Uh, everybody's safe. We're all well. Thank you for everybody who called and asked and whatever. But really quickly, it's Tuesday, so I like to share my thoughts with you. And there's a few things that are on my heart to share that actually kind of fall into alignment with what I've been talking about. Um, patterns, um, temptation, um, gosh, all kind of stuff, right? Um, but I posted today, some of you may have seen it, but I posted today um, something I saw on Instagram by me, uh, about Meghan Markle. I did not see the interview. I saw a, a tidbit of the interview. and um, But basically, an interviewer was asking Meghan Markle about just, you know, her mental condition, how she's dealing with all of the stress of life in the palace. You know, he didn't say being the first African-American princess, but I'm sure that's a, a large part of the, the pressure and the, you know, stuff she's dealing with. But she almost, you know, choked up a little bit, almost teared up. And she stopped and said, thank you. No one really asked, normally asked me that. And it just really made me think, um, so often we pass people, we very um, superficially ask them, hey girl, how you doing? Or what's up, bro? You good? And we really don't care about what their answer is. We really don't really, really want to know. I mean, it's just what we are supposed to say in passing, right? And the actual heart behind how are you friend how are you sister how are you brother is not there it's it's really just a words in passing you good you straight all right you know i'll talk to you later but when we really stop and look at people and look into their eyes you will see way more than what their smile or their good smelling cologne or their cute little outfit or their um, child, their fabulous, unbelievable weave is or whatever it is, right? You will look past all of that superficiality and you will see them. And I sat down recently with, um, this weekend actually with a new friend and we had lunch and she and I were sharing portions of our story. And this is a beautiful, young lady i mean several of the waiters kept coming over and you know had some niceties they wanted to say but um she's been through a lot and her story does not match her appearance and then when i began to share my story she stopped me and she says there you just you do not look like what you've been through and um a lot of times because we don't look like what we've been through. I've had people come up to me several times to say, you know, Carmen, you are so strong and you have it all together. I just don't know how to help you. I just don't think you need help, really. And unfortunately, a lot of leaders fall into that category where people don't think they need help. People don't think leaders hurt. They don't think leaders have despair, uh, depressing days. They don't think leaders want to jump, you know? <laughs> Everybody else would have jumped. But if you're a leader, you're not allowed to want to jump, right? So to be in a position of leadership over a country where you are now new to the game and you not only are new to the game, you are new to the cultural game of that country. You are newly married and you have a baby on top of that all within a year. Yes, somebody please check on my mental health. Somebody please ask me, how am I doing? Not how do I like being a princess? Not how am I enjoying living in a palace? Not how do I like being the duchess of whatever she's the duchess of, Sue Six, I think. But how am I? How am I? Megan, how are you, sis? Girl, let's, let's get some tea. Let's sit down. Let's, you know, get a babysitter so you and I can talk. Who's doing that? Who's doing that in your life? Who are those people who can get in your face and say, you know what? Um, we see your gift shining. We love your singing. We love your voice. You are an anointed singer. 
Girl, when you lead worship, I hear heaven. But how are you? How are you? I know that there's other things going on in your life that got you um, pent up against the ropes. How are you doing? How are you managing that? Because beyond your gift, we want you to survive. Because when you something happened to you, guess what? They're going to replace your gift with another gift. And that's just real. You know how many pastors drop dead and they just get a new pastor? But can we care for the pastor while he's living? Can we give the pastor some help? Last night at prayer, you know, their uh, uh, prophet Benson at the Transformation Prayer Center, I'll give them, a, give them a plug in Dallas, Transformation Prayer Center, gave the illustration of Moses when they were holding up, you can't see my hands, but holding up Moses' hands. Um, you know, when they, he was getting tired, when he was getting tired, but while they were holding his hands up, they were winning the battle. But as soon as they dropped, um, they began to lose the battle and people would lose their life. But so often we leave our leaders hanging. And I don't know why I keep focusing on leaders today, but maybe, maybe someone out there needs to hear this because leaders need help too. It's, I mean, leaders get the vision. They get the understanding of what it's going to take to get the vision but they need helpers. They need um, support. They need check-in dates. Like, pastor, how you doing? First lady, how you doing? Prophet, how you doing? Um, minister, how are you doing? And not just in the church, your boss, your child's teacher. Lord, have mercy. Child, check on your child's teacher. <laughs> check on the teachers, okay? Because they are navigating your child. And, and normally these days, about 20 to 20 four, 25 kids at a time. And that begins to wear down your mental capacity. You may be an awesome teacher. You may be the most creative teacher in your state. But after month, after month, after month of trying to uh, um, wrangle these little children into the classroom and get them to listen and get them to whatever, you start wearing down. And unless you have someone saying, hey, we see your gift, we appreciate your gift, we applaud your gift. You're awesome. But how are you? We are coming after the you. Your mind. Is your mind right? Are you, are you thinking properly? Are you discouraged? Are you having uh, dark thoughts? Is there a dark cloud over you? Do you need to talk through some things? Your emotions. Are you stable in your emotions? Child, listen. Y'all know I shoot straight because can't none of y'all send me to heaven or hell. God already know what I deal with, right? <laughs> but there are days when I'm like, God, my emotions are wishy-washy on today. I mean, one day I'm up. The next day I'm down. One minute is, is let's go conquer the world. The next minute is like, nobody knows. You know, it's like, girl, get some stability in your life. Well, who's checking on you? Who's checking on your emotions? Because there are times where you, you're not strong enough to do that for yourself. Who are your people that can check on you and call you out that way because you need them? So you got your mind. You got your emotions. Your will. Have you given up the will to live? Have you given up the will to win? Have you given up the will to, to um, prosper? Have you settled? Like, well, I guess this is it for me. I guess this is as good as it's going to get for me. Because of all of the stuff that has gone on in your life, have you given up on you? And I hope for all of us that we have the people that see us. They don't see what they think we are. They don't see what they perceive us to be, but they see us. They want us to prevail. They want us to survive. The real us, not the showtime at the Apollo West where we got the lights and the stage lights and we got the professional makeup and we got our showtime outfit ready. But the us who has been traumatized, the us who has been wounded, the us who has been let down by life and people and circumstances, the us that is just trying to get up every day and make it happen to accomplish what we believe God has put us on the earth to accomplish. Who are the people in your life that can call that out in you? Because as Meghan Markle was saying, people don't normally ask me that. And that's sad. Do you know how many people she probably comes into contact with in a week? How many people she has to give herself to? She has to present the best of herself to? She has to smile for? She has to wave for? She has to pretend for? But can anybody in her circle 
can she be real with anybody? Can she let herself, her hair down and her ugly out and still have a circle of people around her that will love her through that? We all need that. So we need it so desperately. We need it so desperately. And so I really hope and pray that you have that in your life. If you don't have that, that you will go after it pretty adamantly because it is very necessary. And then lastly, I'm going to um, mention quickly Kanye West. I'm not going to go into Kanye West because I'm not. I'm going to keep my mouth off of it. I'm going to keep my mouth off. Somebody was asking me about it recently. I was like, not yet. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say too much about it. This is what I will say about Kanye West. I honor the fact that he's going after God. I love that. I honor the fact that he is um, seeking the Lord because I feel like all of us at some point have to wrestle with our own soul salvation. It's, it's, it's biblical. Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling, right? This is my prayer for him. My prayer for Kanye is that the people around him but give him room to grow in this faith that he is discovering. Before they elevate him too high and too quickly, um, they will give him room to grow. They would allow the gift of God in him to be vetted properly. So that even though he is a musical genius, even though he is quoting out the good book and all of that, it will not happen so quickly that it sets him up for a failure. Um, I was talking to someone else about this recently and I mentioned the old rapper Mace. I don't know if you remember him, but Mace gave his life to Christ too. Mace was in one minute. He was on a stage with the little dancers and the little shorts and the little lights and the little money popping. And a couple minutes later, Mace was on TV and preaching. Like literally a couple minutes later after he had acknowledged that I gave my life to look to the Lord. I'm leaving the music industry. I turned on TV and Mace on TV and preaching. He wasn't giving the interview. He was preaching the gospel. And my thought was, wow. 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 It wasn't wow. How did they let him happen? It was wow. Is this brother going to be okay? That's, that's, that light is bright. That TV in across the world, nationwide, that's a bright light. That's a big spotlight. That's a lot of pressure. And it's also a lot of pushback. If you know anything about ministering to anybody on any level, a lot of times there's spiritual pushback because the devil does not want you affecting people's souls. So to put someone that's new in the faith in a light like that, my concern was for him. And unfortunately, it was not long after that. I mean, I began, I believe he became a pastor. I believe he had a church very quickly. Unfortunately, he was not able to sustain that. I don't know where he is right now in life, but I don't believe he's in the church as on that capacity. So my concern for Kanye is the people will allow him space to grow. They will not magnify the gift. They will not um, glorify, oh, he's doing this and he's, oh, and he's doing this now for the Lord. They will give him some space to work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Honor it, celebrate it, pray for him, support him in every way possible. But um, don't set the brother up for a fall. That's that's all I'm going to say there. Don't set him up. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I want to give you this scripture out of John chapter 8 because it's the word, the truth that sets us free. The Bible says in John chapter 8 and 15, you judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. These are red letters. This is Jesus talking. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, come on in the room, Jesus. Don't you love when Jesus be talking? He just be dropping like, Jesus has so many mic drops in the Bible. I love Jesus. I love the Bible. Okay. And Jesus said, and yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. So we judge according to the flesh. I say that scripture because a lot of times we see things. We see people. We see them thriving in our own eyes. Like some of these people I mentioned, Meghan Markle, Kanye West, people you know, people who've looked at me on different days and just thought, oh, she looks like she has it all together. She couldn't have anything going on wrong in her life. The ones who know, I'm sure y'all doing this too. Mm, mm. If you only knew, if you only knew. And a lot of times people judge you according to your flesh, what they see, 
They may see you on a bad day. Your flesh might be flaring up or your spiritual issues might be manifesting. Um, and they're just like, oh, child, you know, judging you negatively, judging you harshly, judging you as unrighteous, judging you as unchristian. People have all kinds of judgments they judge you with. But Jesus is saying, I don't judge, I don't judge anyone. He certainly doesn't judge us after the flesh because we know God looks at our heart. But he said, if I did judge, my judgment would be true. So for those of you who are falling under the condemnation of others, the judgment of others because of what you're going through, don't worry. Don't worry. People cannot send you to heaven or to hell. Let your concern and your focus be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your concern and your focus be on Abba, Father in heaven. Okay, that is the judgment that is going to count. That is the one that will matter most. People will frustrate you with their judgments, but their judgments have no final say in your eternal destination. All right, so be free today in your mind, your soul, your body, and your spirit. This is me checking in on you. How are you doing? How are you doing? If anybody needs to talk, y'all know I talk, I'm a good talker. I'm going to share this quick story with you. I keep saying I'm going to stop, but I just keep some stuff. Last night I'm at prayer, right? And I was, I had a rough day. I'm not even going to get into it, but it was, it, it, my whole day wasn't rough. My afternoon was rough. I'll say it that way. I'll qualify that. But anyway, so I'm at prayer trying to work through my own salvation, like we saying. I'm trying to get my spirit back right. And my mind was all over the place. I mean, it's, you know how, you know, it was all over the place. It was like one of those heartbeat monitors. And then um, with, without my knowing this was going to happen, I was, being, I was asked to pray. Child, I don't have a problem praying. I know the Lord. I can pray. I think I pray for everything but the offering. I was asked to pray for the offering. I think I prayed for snacks. I think I prayed for it to rain. I don't recall praying for the offering. So it was pretty funny to me. And it was, it was humbling for me because, you know, you want to be ready in season out season. Mother was not ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. And it's okay because, again, nobody there probably cared. They may not have even noticed. Maybe they did. I don't know. People who probably are seasoned be like, child, what was you misquoting scriptures in the... <laughs> it was rough. <clears throat> but I say this to say, you can catch somebody in one of those moments, not knowing what they've gone through, not having discernment to be able to filter through, okay, this is not how they normally are, or, you know, something else must be going on here. They don't seem to have it together. And you can just make a uh, surface level judgment and carry that on to label that person for however long you know them. But it's not wisdom to do that. It's not wisdom to do that. Be more concerned about the person's heart. Be more concerned about their well-being. Be more concerned about their spiritual health. When was the last time you won a soul to Christ? When was the last time you asked somebody, do you know the Lord? How are you in your walk with God? Are you living right? Is your house right? Is your house in order? What if Jesus came back today? Would you be ready? I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned more about you than your gift. More concerned about you than how you look. More concerned about you than what you can offer to me. Give the best of yourself and honor others by asking them, are they well? Have a great Tuesday, y'all.